in this moment while we're talking about uh, racial justice that sometimes we get narrowly focused on what seems to be the most overt instances of what looks like racism and discrimination. And oftentimes um, people feel like if I don't use the N word, if I've no, never worn blackface, then I'm a good person. I've never done any of those things that people are talking about. And really, I think the focus should be, as we talk about racism as a public health crisis and the systemic nature of racism, it is really the, the things that we don't see, the things that don't show up in pictures, the things that don't get recorded, the things that are not typed, the institutions that allow health disparities to be upheld, the institutions that allow mistreatment and redlining and disproportionate education outcomes to be upheld. I believe looking at the body of work that I have known Terry to do, that you know what happened and what he did 30 years ago was a very uh, bad choice. And I don't call mistakes because it was intentional. He decided to put on blackface. He decided to wear his hair in the way that he did. It was an intentional choice. It was a very poor choice. However, I believe that what we call on often for in our community is an opportunity for, for individuals to have second chances. If there were a slew of photos, if there were um, recent day photos in his tenure and leadership within the county that he was engaging in those kinds of activities and behaviors, then I would be having a very different conversation. But I don't want us to get distracted by one photo and lose sight of the fact that every single day there are policies, there are laws in place that we need to dismantle because those are the real target of our frustration and those are the things that are going to get us to change. It's an individual thing. I don't think that um, a person who maybe is more proximate to the physical harm that uh, racial discrimination has played in our history and may have more trauma may not be able to as easily forgive. And I'm not going to put my, my thoughts or opinions on them as a burden um, that we have to extend the olive branch because the Black community has always been put in a position to overwhelmingly look past trauma and harm. However, I do believe that the same, the same grace that we want to receive is the same grace we have to be willing to give. And so in this uh, particular instance, I've had limited personal interaction. I've talked to many friends and colleagues who have had more um, interaction. And, and again, there's nothing in recent history that would have made any of us believe that this is a photo that would have come out. But again, I do believe that Unfortunately, many of the things that all of us do in the dark have the potential to come to light. And so I think that we should definitely be judging people by the consistent behavior that they have. And there are some folks that don't have any photos out that I would care more about us talking about in terms of their body of work, because there's enough evidence of the systems that they have upheld and the trauma that they have caused our community from policies and procedures the challenges that we are about to have going into this next election, the challenges that we have about getting communities counted for the census, that's a huge issue. Cleveland is undercounted and we don't have enough resources to get people the community health programs that they need. And it's going to be harder to do that. So I just don't want us to get distracted, you know, by a singular photo. And I want us to spend more time talking about the work that we all still have to do as a community to really move forward and pushing for equality and racial justice.